grabbed out a few tools. I'm going to talk about all the tools that you need and all the tools that you also don't need. So if you're stressing over the type of flour to get and how expensive it could possibly be, don't. Just get whatever flour you usually have in your house. That'll work just fine. So day one, what you want to do is, and so just be patient through that period until you get to the point where your starter is doubling every, you know, time you feed it after four to eight hours or so. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Carrie, and this is Keep It Simple DIY. I'm talking all about sourdough starters today. If you missed part one, go check it out. I went into a ton of detail and I just talked your ear off all about sourdough starters. So if you are interested in sourdough starter, that is the video for you. And definitely start there, come back and watch this one after because we are going to be picking up exactly where we left off. off talking about different ratios for hydration for a regular loaf of bread. Now there's of course many different kinds of loaves of bread you can make. You could make a brioche bread that has um, different ingredients like eggs and butter in it or you could just make a standard loaf that just has flour, water, and salt. So we talked about the different hydration levels of dough and now I want to talk about the different methods for stretching and folding it. So I'm going to overlay a few videos here showing the differences between two different kinds of stretch and fold techniques. Now, there's really, there's multiple different ways that you can work your dough to mix it all together once you've done the initial mix. So I want to talk about all three of them. So once you've initially mixed all your dough together, you know, the very first thing you do, you will let it sit for about an hour and that's called auto lies. And all it's doing is just letting it become hydrated. All the flour is getting hydrated, basically. So it's just sitting, you're not doing anything with it. It's just living its best life. So then you get to the point where it is time for you to do your first set of stretch and folds. Now, alternatively, if you were doing a dough that's more of like a cakey dough or a cinnamon roll or a brioche, anything that's not just your regular old bowl, well, not necessarily anything, flexible. You could use your mixer and just mix it right from the get-go, or you could mix it after that first auto lies as well, or both. That will give you the smallest little air bubbles inside of your dough. So if you don't like those bigger air pockets in your dough, that's the way to go. Mix it with a mixer and it will, you know, have those little pockets. Now, if you're looking for those nice sourdough air pockets that we're used to seeing, then you can use a stretch and fold. Two different kinds of folds that you could do are stretch and folds and coil folds. Stretch and folds are where you take the dough and you pull it up and then you fold it over itself and you pull it up again and you fold it over itself. And you do this, you know, a couple times until the dough starts getting a little too stiff to stretch it and fold it. And then you let it sit for about an hour. Then you come do it again. You let it sit for about a half hour, half hour to an hour. Sourdough is really flexible. If you can't get to it right in a half hour, do an hour. If it happens to be an hour and a half, so be it. It'll work out. You want to do that process of folding it and then resting and then folding it and then resting, you know, about three times, maybe four times. And then the other way is coil folds. And so the way you determine which folding method you're going to use is by how hydrated your dough is. So if your dough is very hydrated, so it's a very sticky dough, you won't really be able to get in there and lift it up to stretch and fold it. You'll need to come in underneath it and just like lift it up and then flop it over and lift it up and flop it over. So that's how you determine the two different ways of folding. And you know, they are both equally just as satisfying. I really enjoy folding my dough in any way. Once you've completed a series of stretch and folds or coil folds, you know, three or four with resting in between, then you can just let your dough proof for a little bit of time or you know honestly sometimes i even skip this step and i go straight to shaping and putting it in the fridge so as i said many times before sourdough is flexible it will work with you and what you do but you definitely can let it rise and then once you've given it a couple hours to rise you can shape it so shaping your dough is a little bit harder to explain so i'm going to show you a video of me shaping the dough into a bowl
that's how simple it is it is so satisfying to be rolling the bowl around there's a lot of different ways that you could shape the dough but that is my favorite way to shape the dough as of now that could change in the future and of course if i'm doing something different like a brioche bread i like doing all the twists and the braids and all the fancy things but you know just for starting out definitely forming a bowl is the way to go so once you've formed your bowl you want to put it face side down into a floured container it could be a banneton it could just be something with a dish towel i like those flour sack towels because they're basically just a piece of cotton and they don't have like all the little indentations that regular towels have i have used just a regular old dishcloth before and it just stuck a little bit more to the dough that's why i prefer the flour sack ones now my preferred method for dusting the bowl and dusting the bowl is to use rice flour that's what creates that nice like white texture on the outside rice flour also doesn't burn like regular flour does but if you don't have rice flour of course you could just use regular all-purpose flour or any type of flour that you're using and if you are wanting to use rice flour and you don't have it yet definitely check your local asian mart that's where i find it the cheapest it is like a quarter of the price of what i can find it for on amazon if i go into the store so once i have it in its bowl you can let it ferment on the counter or you can put it in the fridge to let it long ferment either way i prefer putting mine in the fridge because it makes it easier to score it when you take it out of the fridge and then the longer you leave your dough the more sour of a taste also the smaller the starter amount the more sour of a flavor because the longer it takes to ferment so the more sourdough starter you put in the quicker it ferments the less sourdough starter the longer it takes to ferment so i like to only use 50 grams so it can take a long time to ferment and the longer it ferments the more sour your bread is i've also noticed that the more aged your starter is the more sour it can get i'm definitely getting a lot more sour breads now that my starter is a little bit more mature but i like to keep mine in the fridge overnight one night two nights sometimes three nights it's really flexible so if you can't get to it just get to it later and the worst thing that'll happen is it might be a little bit overproofed but it will be just fine now once you're ready to bake your sourdough preheat your oven to whatever you want to really i mean the higher the heat the more of a crispy edge you'll get the lower the heat the you know you'll just have regular old bread so somewhere between 350 and 450 is what i like some people like to go up to 500 to start and then back the temperature down. Baking it is a little bit different depending on like what type of a tool you're using to bake it. If you're baking it just in a standard loaf pan, of course you would just stick that in the oven. If you're baking it on a pizza stone or in a cast oven, you would want to preheat those or you don't have to, it's flexible, right? You could start from cold or you could preheat the stone. The stone I would suggest to preheat because I don't know if it would crack, but if you're using a Dutch oven, some people like to preheat it, some people don't. I've personally never started with a cold Dutch oven before. I recently tried open bake for the first time and I love how simple it was to open bake the dough. So if you're looking for that crusty top on your bread, you definitely want to start out with some steam in your oven, which could literally just be like any type of dish with some water in it that creates steam or your Dutch oven creates steam on its own. And you do that for about half the bake time and then you take the lid off or you take the steam out and then you bake for the other half and that way it starts out getting that small dough and it rises really nicely and then you get that nice crispy edge now if you're using just a regular old loaf pan and you're not wanting to do the crusty edge that's completely fine too you could put steam in the whole time or you could just not put it in at all and it would bake up just like any traditional regular loaf of bread just with a sourdough flair Bake times are definitely different. If you're reading a recipe online, definitely take into consideration where you live as well. For example, I see a lot of recipes that say, bake it for 40 minutes covered, then 20 minutes uncovered. And I have found that where I live, it's a very dry climate. And so everything here is just, you know, doesn't take as long to bake or dry out because it's so dry here. And I've found that I need a lot less time on every single sourdough recipe that I use. So. I like to usually do 20 to 25 minutes covered and then maybe 10 to 15 uncovered, but that's just personally here in Colorado in high altitude with the stove that I have. So you would need to, you know, play it by ear, keep checking your oven to see how your bread is. 
And then bread is fully cooked when it's 200 degrees. And so that's Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I will put the Celsius here. And if you don't have a thermometer, you could just go by, you know, texture, feel, look. That's how I used to do my bread and see if it was done, which is interesting because I had a thermometer, but I didn't know that you could take the temperature of the dough and know if it's done. So 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it's done. And then you can pull it out and let it cool. Now here's the tricky part with sourdough. It continues to cook. Well, it's not just sourdough. Every bread does this, but it continues to cook as you take it out. So you definitely want to put it on some type of a place to cool, like a cooling rack. And then you want to let it sit until it's completely cooled down. If you're looking for that traditional sourdough flavor, texture, and everything, sourdough does continue to cook. And so if you cut into it earlier, you'll have a lot more of a gummy texture, um, which, you know, if you just want hot bread and you want to eat it right then, by all means, go for it. But if you're looking for that traditional flavor and texture in spring, definitely you want to wait. Now, when you take your sourdough out of the fridge in the morning and you're getting ready to bake it, you do want to put a score in it. And so you can use anything sharp, a knife, scissors, a lame, and you just wanna put at least one really deep score. A deeper score will give you a really nice rise. And then if you don't put your score deep enough, you could get random parts of the bread kind of exploding out of. I had that happen recently where I tried to put a star on a bread for the first time and I scored around it, but I didn't score far enough. And so it kind of just like blew out one side. So you can score straight down the middle, but do it deep. You could score around the edge and put a cute design on the top. You can do whatever you want to. I'm usually not that artsy when it comes to that. My art capabilities are in forms other than um, like physical art, whether it be paper, pencil, sourdough, I'm not good at drawing. So I usually don't try to draw on doughs, but I'm trying to branch out and see if I can draw on some dough. So once your sourdough is out of the oven and cooled, you can now slice into it. And we're hoping for that perfect sourdough consistency and bubbles. If you don't get it on the first try, don't worry. I don't think anybody really does. It is so fun though to just keep trying and it's totally cool if it doesn't work out. It still tastes just as good as if it were to look beautiful. I do like to use a bread knife to cut into my bread just because it just makes it so much easier. But of course you could use any bread knife. I mean, heck, you could even just tear it. However you want to cut it works perfectly fine. Now I've been talking mainly about just a regular old bowl, nothing fancy, but you can be super creative with sourdough. You can do pretty much anything you want to do and make any flavors that you want. When you get to the point where you're laminating your dough, which is, you know, just when you're rolling it out into your ball, you start with it in a sheet. You can put any extra goodies on there that you want. You can put raisins, you can put cinnamon, you can put brown sugar, you can put jalapenos and cheddar. The list goes on and on. You could put literally anything in your bread. And then you just roll it up as normal and continue on. It just has extra goodies or add-ins inside of it. You can also substitute the water for something else. In one of my videos, I substituted onion jam for some of the water and I made an onion jam bread and that was delicious. Definitely experiment. Sourdough is supposed to be fun and exciting and just experiment with different flavors. You don't necessarily need a recipe as long as you know your basic ratios of what you're going for and you can work that in and make any flavor that you want. And then of course, if you're wanting to make something like a brioche roll, maybe start with some recipes, get some ideas first, just because they have a bit more ingredients. You could be using sugar, you could be using butter, oil, eggs, and it, the list just goes on and on. You could also make your sourdough into a, a focaccia, just a flat bread. There's so many different things that you can do with sourdough and this is why I'm so excited about it. The list just goes on and on and on and I've noticed the flavor of sourdough is just so much better than the flavor of any other yeasted bread that I've had, even the ones that I've made homemade. Leave a comment down below letting me know, have you started your sourdough journey? Are you wanting to start a sourdough journey and just haven't yet? Also, if you have started, what kind of sourdough bread is your favorite? What's your go-to? What's your preferred method? Tell me all about it. I'm all ears. I love everything sourdough. I'm on quite a few different sourdough groups on Facebook and it's just so fun to watch and to see the certain trends coming around. The trends in sourdough is just hilarious. This year, the first trend of the season that I saw was making the pumpkin loaf and then there's making the turkey loaf and then there's making the Christmas tree loaf. It's just so cool to see all the different things that people do and are creative with. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and haven't yet, please subscribe. I'd love to see you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.